Hello there, I'm Derek Fournier and welcome to Plain Spoken, a podcast where we get real about business, leadership, and life. I've spent years in the trenches of leadership and team building, and now I'm bringing those conversations out into the open. We're going to talk strategy, dissect success, and maybe share a few laughs along the way. Each episode, I'll be joined by fascinating guests, from successful CEOs to brilliant minds shaking up their industries. We're here to offer you insights, challenge your perspectives, and ignite your curiosity. So whether you're a seasoned professional or just starting out, there's something here for you. Join me on this journey of exploration as we make sense of the complex world of business, one conversation at a time. Let's dive into today's episode of Plain Spoken. Welcome back to Plain Spoken. I'm Derek Fournier, your host, and this is going to be one of those plain and simple podcasts where you're stuck with just me. I don't have a guest today, but I was uh, kind of fixated on a topic that's been bouncing around in social media and, and sort of all over the interwebs, as it were, and it, and it really relates to the use of the word family. And so I don't want to belabor the point, but that's exactly what I'm going to do in this sort of quick podcast where I want to talk about the concept of family with regards to work. It seems like one of the trends that anyone who's on social media trying to drive a following, um, it falls probably into the bucket of contrarianism that became popular, not necessarily with social media, but certainly was was inflamed by social media. You know, you want to take a stance, an unpopular opinion or a hot take that your work colleagues are not your family. Now, because I'm a jackass, I would point that point out that that's a truism, generally speaking, though quite often uh, you will have people that work at a company who are, in fact, family members. Um, And I know there are some people who think that's a terrible thing. The reality is I want to start by kind of talking about what family is sort of classical and then what family, at least the way we've always always talked about it with regards to work, tends to be and kind of muddle through those concepts because I think sometimes in an effort – to make a point, we oversimplify. And I'm sure there are great terms and and uh, definitions for that tactic or technique. But normally what I see is, you know, your, your team can't be family because you'd never fire your family, right? It, that's one of the sort of rough uh, base level comments that I see made quite often, or you wouldn't cut their pay, or you wouldn't do, you know, insert negative thing here that sometimes has to happen as a byproduct of of work. The reality is that that's not true. In fact, there are many times where families stop talking to one another, which would be the equivalent of a termination, but that's not really the point. The oversimplification that that I'm sort of fixated on here is that oversimplification of what family is and and more uh, how family is often used when it comes to work. I mean, the people that you work with, generally speaking, are going to be people you spend as much time with as you do your family. And so let's start with what I look at as family. And and everyone's got their own definition for this. I grew up as essentially an only child. Now I have two brothers and a sister, but I was a late in life child. Like there was 18 years between me and the closest sibling. I grew up without any siblings around. Now that doesn't mean that I didn't have family. I had a mom and dad at home, which was fantastic and put me in a, you know, squarely in the lucky sperm club of having two parents at home that cared for me. And, and that was great. What, what I started to do because I had a lot of friends who had, you know, siblings around the house and cousins that would come over and all that sort of stuff. And I, I didn't really grow up in that environment. So a phrase that became pretty common that I did not coin, but I certainly used the hell out of was, you know, friends or family you choose. When you find people in life uh, that become close to you, there's a continuum, right? From acquaintances all the way up to what you'd call family friends. I mean, how many of us have an uncle or an aunt who is absolutely not an uncle and not an aunt or an aunt, depending on your pronunciation. But that is the role they play in your family unit at home, right? And and those positions, despite what movies will tell you and what some people will advocate for, are not irreversible. People do come into those roles and then drift out. And, and in fact, some of the most uh, treasured relationships that I have, and, and you may be able to relate, are the people who can come into your life at that level And then, you know, the winds of change happen. Maybe it's a a relocation for work or a marriage or a divorce or whatever the case may be. And you end up being separated by miles and time. 
But these are the people that when you get back together after that long separation, it's as if you never missed a step. So the word family is not just the nuclear family that is discussed and not the things you see on TV and, and not one simple concept. Everyone's family looks a little bit different. At the root of a family is trust, support, uh, encouragement, love, uh, attention, security, right? These are the things in your family. And I'm not here to lecture you on what families are. That's not the point. My point is that that personal life, that, that kind of family we have in personal life, when we're around other people and we're having to make that trade off of, oh, do I spend the time with my spouse or my children or you know the extended family going on a vacation, or am I spending time with the people at work? You better damn well find a way to enjoy the people at work if you're going to do great stuff. Now, immediately someone should say, well, I cannot have that relationship with people at work and still do a great job. Yes, you can. I would, however, assert the organizations that I've worked in that have been the most successful are the ones who built these ties. Who That, that doesn't mean that you end up you know, going to their house on Christmas or, or Hanukkah or any of the holidays or only vacationing with them, but you end up building a relationship where those same kind of concepts around uh, trust, and security and reliability, dependability, those, those feelings permeate the atmosphere. And, and I always end up starting with trust because I've got trust on the brain um, because at the heart of all of that is trust. And so when you say something like, oh, my work family, no, asshole, it doesn't mean that I think this is like my spouse or that this is like my son or my daughter. What it means is that I have a relationship with these people that is rooted in trust that transcends simply exchange of currency for work product. Now, it can start there. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing horrible or evil or maniacal about an exchange of currency for work product. That's the core of our economy, right? But when you spend a lot of time together, and, and you know, for those of us who are fortunate enough to work in areas where we get a chance to to innovate or do things beyond a uh, sort of rote process. And again, nothing wrong with that. It needs to be done. But, but when you're looking for meaning beyond that, you end up spending a lot of time. You have to count on each other. You have to rely on each other. You have to be able to know that you can take risks. And if you take the risks and they don't pay off, if there's some sort of backlash, that the rest of your team is there for you. That's, that's really important. And, and that doesn't demean or diminish, degrade the word family at home. But, but what I don't like is that it seems as though anyone who thinks that they have a work family is being castigated by so-called experts who say you can't have that because that's just not the same thing. It's like there's a race to be the biggest smartass. And take it from me, and I am a smartass. I have spent many years in the cynical seat. And God knows I probably default to cynical more often than I should. Um, there was a quote recently, and I don't know if I've covered this on any other recordings yet because I have a tendency in my old age to repeat myself, but I heard it on a, another podcast. I'll have to go find the reference and I'll, I'll update this. But the, the quote was essentially, I choose to be an optimist because then I, I'm only ever let down once, right? As the concept here being, if you're a pessimist or a cynic, then you're dealing with all of the negativity of the the, the bad outcome, even before it comes. And then if it does come, that's the second time you've had to deal with it. It seems as though that has become the norm. And I used to be that person. I used to be the person who said, well, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a cynic, but that makes me a realist, implying that cynics are the realists. And you know what? Sometimes bad stuff happens, but I find that when bad stuff happens, I'd rather be around people that I trust and care about to work through those bad things. That's what it means to have a family at work, right? So if we need to create a whole new word for that, we can, right? The, the lexicon supports it, it's a living language. But could we stop being assholes to each other and saying you can't have that or, or trying to make people not pursue that at work? It is not a binary where there's only one definition of a family, and that's the only thing that exists. We should know that just in personal lives. There are countless definitions of family. There are countless kinds of families. There are countless groups of people that join together to form families. 
So why would it not extend to where you work? You don't have to have just one family. And I'm not saying you should have a, a spouse and kids on both coasts. That's not only illegal, but it certainly would be daunting as a task. My point is stop oversimplifying everything. Now, I know the name of my company is Plain Sight Strategy Group. And the concept is that quite often the answers to complex problems are in plain sight. What that doesn't mean is that everything is simple, that you have to be reductive. And so, you know, what this rant is really about is strive to build relationships with people you spend time with, whether they're people in your personal life or in your professional life. I have had the greatest time at work and bifurcating, separating, and, and, you know, totally my personal life with teams that I was close to. Now, there's a risk to that because sometimes bad shit does happen at work. Sometimes people do lose their jobs. Sometimes falling out occurs. When you get close to someone, then personal relationships can come in and that does muddy the water sometimes. But it's, it's almost like you're clipping off the highs and the lows if you don't try and go after that. And everything is just mediocre. And I don't think great organizations are built on mediocre teams. I think if you're pursuing great teams, you have to take those risks. And those risks start with an extension of trust and the building of relationships that are founded in trust. So um, I know this is kind of a, sounds like a lecture. I don't mean it to be, but I, I saw once again, it, it, it has become almost the topic du jour um, to, to attack anyone who talks about family at work and to almost demonize work when it's the place you spend the second most time. And for some people, and maybe this is a great argument, right? It's where you spend the most time. I'm a huge fan of 37 Signals and Jason Fried and David Hennemeyer Henson. I think that it doesn't have to be crazy at work as a book. If you've not read it, I recommend you read it. It kicked me squarely in the throat as someone who works too much. I put too much of my self-worth. I pull too much of my self-worth from what I do at work. They've done an incredible job, it seems, from the outside looking in. I've never actually met either of the gentlemen. I've read content. I've listened to podcasts. Um, it seems like they've built an incredible culture at work, right? And I think you can do that. And I think they still genuinely love, and, and people seem really weird about using that word. They shouldn't be. It's a wonderful word. I think they love the people they work with. I think they love the things they do. I think they love the method by which they do them. And I think that that love is at the heart of incredible success. So at any rate, I'd love to hear your opinions on it. Uh, to me, this is just another of those oversimplifications for clickbait worthy bullshit that is not well thought out. Uh, and so I'm sure there's someone out there going, well, if my work life was a family, if it was a family, then they would never have laid me off. You know what? There's probably been a time in your family family when you did something not well and someone else did it. Now, I'm not saying that someone was laid off only because he didn't do a good job. Sometimes there's just not enough money. And the layoff equivalence there is we didn't get to go on vacation that year because we didn't have enough money. But in a work sense, you know, there are a couple of options. And, and as a leader, we have executed many of these, right? If it's about money, and believe me, money comes into work. It really does. Cash is king, as my man Joe says. So when you like when we faced COVID, we could have done layoffs, which we did some, and that sucks. Anytime you have to release someone that's not performance-based, and that's important. When it comes to work, if I'm paying you to be there, even though I like you a great deal, but you're not doing the job, if I can't find somewhere else for you to be, it is not fair for me to continue to pay you to be there. It's not fair to everyone else who is doing the job. I can I have I have fired people who I love and I'm still friends with them. Not all of them. Not everybody can make it through that. That's why I say it takes trust. It doesn't make the people who I'm not friends with lesser. It just means that we weren't able to navigate those waters. Those waters are treacherous. This can become an emotional topic. But there are times where you have to make those decisions. Now, one path is layoffs, reductions, whatever you want to call them. They're never, they're never fun. They're never good. Now, leaving a company because there's not an opportunity for you to grow is a different thing. 
right? I, I remember really can, making some people concerned when I said, if, if we can't find a place for you in our organization where you're happy and fulfilled and contributing in the way you want to contribute, then I'll help you find a job somewhere else. That wasn't a threat. I wasn't being an asshole. I want people to love what they do when they work on my team. And if I can't, for whatever reason, maybe we don't have the funds, the sector, the time, whatever, the need, if we can't find that place, then I, I take it as a leader as my job to try and help them find that because maybe they go find another company and then they go build these incredible skill sets. And as the, the roads of time uh, move forward, we reconvene somewhere and they've learned these new incredible skills and we collaborate in a different way. That's okay. You don't have to work one place for the rest of your life. The other option is to sort of take across the board reductions. That's a method to try and counteract the, the, the boogeyman that is the market, right? Which tends to usually be the thing that people rail against when they talk about you can't have family at work because you'd never fire a family member. Which if you haven't picked up, I think is a horseshit argument. And we did that too. Cuts across the board. We tried to do them relative so that people who made less were less uh, impacted. Um, the same way you would do a sort of a regressive uh, model. You're never going to get it perfect. You're never going to get it exact. There's not going to be a right. There's a best effort, right? And again, if you're doing that in an era of trust where people know you're doing the best you can to try and keep everyone as whole as possible, then you can make it out the other end. And we did in this particular case. That doesn't mean you always will. It doesn't mean that there weren't people who were upset or hurt during that process. It wasn't our intention. But relationships are messy, all of them. Why we think work relationships are going to be any less messy is beyond me. Why I think, why I see purported experts trying to simplify to a point of reductiveness, if that's even a word, work should just be work. It's like you go punch a clock and then you just screw screws in. And there may be people who do that. But for the kind of work that we're typically talking about, this is stuff that you're having to immerse yourself in and work with teams and expose yourself as vulnerable. Vulnerability is something I've talked about a great deal, and I'll continue to talk about because I learned about vulnerability from the people that I work with, from people who I consider family personally, who people I consider family as colleagues, people who I love and trust and would kill to work with again. That concept of vulnerability has to exist because you have to be in a room with other people and be open to being wrong. So, if if that spirit, if that sense, if that if that mode is not most like a family, then then another thing I'd love to hear from you is what word would you use for it? Maybe the right answer is another word. Maybe people have, want to protect the word family. I choose to extend it. I love that I have people that I've worked with all the way back to my first job that I still care about. And God knows I was crappy at it then, right? And there are some that would argue I'm not much better at it now. I, I think they're wrong, but everyone's entitled to their opinion. But the, the takeaway here is if you see this, whether it's on LinkedIn or, or Twitter or X or whatever the hell else we call these things, or even blog posts, like a lot of times it's just driven to start conversation. And, and maybe that's okay if you're just throwing that out there to start a conversation like this. But it seems like it's the prevailing wind right now. It's like, oh, well, I, you know, I appreciate you guys, but you're so yesterday, workers, colleagues, they are not your family. Family is one thing, and it's the people at home, implying that the family at home could be just one thing. Family is not just one thing. So the takeaway from me for you um, is give me feedback. Tell me if I'm full of crap. This, uh, this was a burr under my saddle, as a guy in Lakeland once said, and I wanted to talk about it. So this is a short form form factor for that. Um, love to know what your thoughts are on it, uh, as well as what your thoughts are about the podcast and what we've been talking about in our blog. I appreciate you guys who do follow it. Um, we are posting on LinkedIn as well. Uh, we have some more shows coming up with some great guests uh, over the next couple of weeks and months. And I look forward to talking to you in the future. Thanks so much for tuning into another episode of Plain Spoken. I hope today's conversation sparked some new ideas and left you with a few takeaways to ponder or implement in your own journey. If you enjoyed the show and found value in our dialogue, I'd be really grateful if you could hit the subscribe button. Sharing this podcast with your network helps us grow and continue to bring you insightful and engaging content. Don't forget, 
You can find us on LinkedIn and a few other social platforms. Follow us, interact with our posts, and join the Plain Spoken community. Your thoughts, feedback, and ideas are what keep this conversation going. So please drop us a line or leave us a comment. Thanks again for joining me, Derek Fournier, on Plain Spoken. Keep an eye out for our next episode. And until then, keep growing. What the, 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 what